in Hungary, we have a very, very serious uh, conflict on the subject of uh, Ukraine. When I spoke out against Ukraine at the time, unfortunately, in in a cooperation with uh, with Russia at the time, it was an exaggeration and something I I wouldn't ever do, and I apologize for that. If uh, Viktor Orban at the moment would start to tell people that the sky is uh, green and the grass is blue, then uh, three days later you would find that people believe it. One clear way out would be to dethrone Viktor Orban. It is up to Hungarian opposition politicians uh, and the Hungarian electorate uh, to get rid of this guy. Is Hungary pro-Russian? Why does Orban defend Russia and Putin personally? We posed that question to president of Jobbik party. And this is a particular person which is not a usual politician. He used to be treated as pro-Russian beforehand. Now he's criticizing Orban and he's trying to defend Ukraine inside Hungary. So let's talk to him. What is Hungary for Ukraine? And uh, what is Ukraine for Hungary now? The neighboring country of Hungary, which uh, has decided uh, that it wants to belong to the West and wants to adopt the Western values and wants to become a democracy and, uh, and the market economy, adopt the Western values and wants to uh, choose uh, Europe instead of uh, instead of uh, Russia and instead of uh, Asia, and I think uh, we have to respect this choice and we have to help every country that wants to go along this path. And it's very very unfortunate that uh, that uh, uh, that in Ukraine uh, this. Um, this uh, choice has basically escalated into a into a terrible conflict. There cannot be any doubt as to where we stand in this conflict, and uh, we have to help our neighbor in every way we can. It's a war of aggression that uh, Russia has started against a sovereign country, Ukraine. Some people sure, or at least pretend to be sure, that Hungary does not support Ukraine in this war. In Hungary. We have a very, very serious uh, conflict on the subject of uh, Ukraine and uh, on the on the topic of the of the war, uh, how much and how we should be engaged with Ukraine in this situation. And it is very, very unfortunate that our government, at least in its rhetoric, is uh, appears to be uh, pro-Russia and appears to be blocking in the EU uh, every effort that uh, wants to support uh, Ukraine in every possible way. Uh, this you can see in, in its attitude towards sanctions. While Viktor Orban is um, voting and supporting these sanctions when it comes to decision-making in the Council, he is regularly speaking out against it. You might have thought that that this man lives on a different planet and is looking at a different uh, screen than everybody else. I think to say that the sanctions don't work is uh, is is uh, is a false statement. Uh, sanctions do work, uh, but of course uh, there are ways of making sanctions work much better. This is what we should be working on and not in questioning sanctions because that's very clearly Moscow's narrative. Uh, their, their aim and objective is to weaken uh, European cooperation and uh, weakening European cooperation is by questioning uh, the efficiency of sanctions that it puts on the table. It's a nightmare to me to see that Hungary that passed through uh, a revolution who had Imrenat in its history is currently supporting Russia uh, with a large part of population. It's a very good question, and I don't know the answer to your to, to your question. I, I myself am puzzled as a Hungarian as to how uh, the majority 
of uh, the Hungarian population uh, can, or not the majority, let's say half <laughs> of the Hungarian population uh, lost uh, its sense of direction in this uh, on on this issue. I think the parallel between 1956 and what is happening in Ukraine today is obvious. I mean, I, I think uh, even to an eight-year-old child, you don't have to explain the situation because uh, it's clear. Um, it's very, very clear who is the, the aggressor. It is very clear who is the victim. And it is very clear where a country like Hungary that has been in a, in a, in a very similar situation in the not too distant past before. Mr. Dondoshi, I, I have to notice an elephant in the room. You are president of the Jobbik party, uh, which has um, a, quite a special image, let's say, in Ukraine. And uh, you've been a, a kind of observer uh, on so-called uh, elections or referendum in, in occupied Donbass. And now you are talking about pro-Russian uh, Orban. Uh, to me, it's mind-blowing. So in Ukraine, Martin Dundoshi uh, would be perceived as pro-Russian because you made these steps. Now you're talking that Orban is pro-Russian. What, what's going on? Well, a lot of things have happened in the past couple of years. It is true that in 2015, I have been uh, in Donbass uh, as an election observer, uh, which has, uh, well, which 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 requires some explanation. Um, before I do the explanation, I have to say it was a mistake and it was over exaggeration of a particular standpoint, which uh, I have taken. Uh, in 2015, uh, I was my party and I was very busy uh, in the aftermath of the Maidan events, the new regime or the new government um, under Poroshenko has, I think, I'm talking from a Hungarian perspective, made a tremendous mistake. It has alienated the ethnic minorities living on the territory of uh, Ukraine. When your new uh, government was set up and when your new parliament assembled, the first move of that parliament was to repeal the language law. A yeah. language law, a language law which was extremely uh, pro-European and pro-minorities, and it gave all the rights uh, a minority can have in the Western world. And for us Hungarians, that my, that uh, language law was a guarantee that Ukraine is uh, is heading towards the European Union and heading towards European values. And it was a guarantee for us that our minorities in the Carpathia, uh, at the time over 100,000 of them, are going to be a respected part of uh, the Ukrainian nation as such. Uh, the repealing of the language law was, in our viewpoint, a very aggressive position of the new regime or the new parliament, uh, which has in, I would say, in the majority of the Hungarians left a very bad uh, uh, taste. Now, I was member of the Hungarian parliament, vice president of the, of the Foreign Affairs Committee, and I was also a member of the Council of Europe. And I have tried to build an alliance amongst those nations in Europe which have a minority living on the territory of Ukraine, Poles, Romanians, uh, Turks, um, and uh, and Russians. Uh, some of the bigger nations that have larger minorities living on uh, the territory of Ukraine. Uh, now, I was very sad and dismayed that there was only one nation which recognized this problem and which was ready to stand up rhetorically, politically, diplomatically 
uh, in protecting their own ethnicities and minorities on the territory of Ukraine, and that was the Russian. Uh, now, I was there. Uh, I I understand the Russians. I well. At the time, I understood Russians a bit less than I understand now, but I knew that it is an imperialistic uh, country and uh, an, a, an aggressive country. We have had many, many episodes of that before. Their war in uh, Georgia and many other threats that it has uh, uh, caused and displayed in the past couple of years. And unfortunately, I uh, accepted uh, this invitation, which I wouldn't accept now. But for you to understand, I was standing on the side of uh, Hungarian minorities, living historic minorities, not put there by Stalin uh, during the Soviet Union. I was protecting them uh, when I when I spoke out against Ukraine at the time. Unfortunately, in in a cooperation with uh, with Russia at the time. I wouldn't go to Donbass again because I understand the consequences and the hidden agenda of uh, Russia in having done that. It was an exaggeration and something I, I wouldn't ever do, and I apologize for that. Uh, but now, when I stand behind uh, Ukraine in this war and in this conflict, I do that for the reasons that I told you before, and also because Hungarians are fighting under the Ukrainian flag against the Russian aggressor at this very moment. Hungarians who are, when they are fighting for Ukraine, they are also fighting for their homeland, uh, Zakarpatia, uh, where they come from and originate from. And they want Ukraine to be uh, to be Western. They want Ukraine to be European, and they 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 want to live in a free um, uh, and democratic and sovereign uh, Ukraine. Now you are posing uh, yourself as as a liberal, uh, a person who firmly stands behind European values. But I also see that uh, earlier one day you proposed to count Jews in Hungary. So, and I'm, I wonder about, so uh, that now uh, supporting Ukraine, you have that kind of uh, uh, background, being not only on these so-called elections, but also attacking Jews in Hungary. Well, but I hope you understood my explanation for what I did. You don't yeah. have to accept it. Uh, as a Ukrainian, I, I don't accept you to, to, uh, to, to accept what I did. I just wanted you to understand the motives and the background. Uh, what, uh, as, as far as that uh, statement of mine is concerned, um, it was another terrible uh, statement uh, from over ten years ago, um, uh, in a in a parliamentary debate where I was talking about national uh, security risks attached to uh, double citizenship, um, which uh, which was a complete uh, uh, mistake. Uh, in the in 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 a debate, which I apologize for one million times, and everybody who knows me knows that I'm not anti-Semitic, I'm not racist. Is there a chance uh, to change uh, Hungarian political position and uh, position of society towards Ukraine? And what can be done to to do that? Absolutely. I mean, I think just as my example shows, uh, change is. Uh, change is possible and uh, and uh, the world is full of change if viktor orban has managed to change uh, the public opinion into into the negative direction then we have to be able to uh, to change it in the positive um the, the the only question is how we have to communicate much clearer and we have to we have to be as good at telling the truth and uh, and saying our version as they are at telling lies. Uh, so I think it's just we have to we have been probably too comfortable. We thought that uh, well, the society is uh, is uh, is prone to uh, to to taking the truth for granted and understanding normality uh, for granted and is immune to propaganda and lies. It's not true. People, 
believe uh, the false narrative if they are told uh, many, many times. I mean, we evidence that in Hungary uh, every day. If uh, Viktor Orban at the moment would start to tell people that the sky is uh, green and the grass is blue, then uh, three days later you would find that, that people believe it and people will start uh, uh, saying it. We have seen it on the migration issue. We have seen it on uh, uh, the topic of George Soros. Uh, we have seen it on, on the topic of uh, uh, Ukraine over and over again. Um, there are lessons to be learned and we have to build a narrative um, and 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 counter these uh, uh, forces in a much more efficient manner. What is the reason for Orban to do that? Because he's obsessed with power. He doesn't care about the truth. He doesn't care about uh, Hungarian national interests. He has managed to uh, to build a framework in Hungary which guarantees him staying in power. Today we have we do have a parliament in Hungary. We do have authorities in Hungary. We do have a civil service in Hungary. We do have a media in Hungary, but they have all been taken over nice and slowly with a two-thirds majority. Viktor Orban has written a new constitution, a new electoral law, a new media law, uh, has basically hollowed out all these institutions built in his own cronies and has managed to use corruption in a way that Europe, the European Union is financing uh, the, the establishment of, of an illiberal system in Hungary. But how does it help for, for Orban to stay in power if he uh, just uh, support uh, uh, Putin, which will become a loser? Uh, which will lose this war, uh, which is now a pariah in the world. Uh, how does it help for Orban? There must be an explanation why Viktor Orban is uh, 100% on the side of uh, Vladimir Putin in this context. While, while it's very, very clear that uh, Russia is going to lose this war, uh, Ukraine is, uh, is, uh, is on the counteroffensive. Uh, Russia has failed in the military uh, combat it appears and uh, and uh, the west uh, europe and uh, uh, the united states it cannot afford uh, to lose the war in ukraine and lose to russia so it is going to do everything in its capacity uh, to help ukraine uh, win this war uh, the real question is for me uh, what will happen to a country hungary uh, and it's and the government, which has uh, been acting as a Trojan horse of Russia throughout this uh, uh, this uh, this offensive or this uh, this uh, war, I don't know. Uh, Viktor Orban, I think, for the first time in twelve years, had completely miscalculated himself. Uh, he's uh, uh, for the first time in twelve years, he's facing very very serious. Uh, problems in his country. Um, there is an economic uh, crisis looming. There is a social crisis looming. There is an energy crisis looming, uh, whereby we have, or this regime has aligned itself 100% uh, with Vladimir Putin's uh, Russia uh, and alienated itself and isolated itself uh, within uh, the Western alliance, which is uh, which it is actually a part of. So I think the earlier uh, Viktor Orban makes a U-turn in this um, uh, policy, the better, and maybe he he can still find a way out. But I have absolutely no idea uh, why he is holding on to uh, to the mast of a ship. Which, um, which is visibly sinking. And you can only think of perhaps uh, Viktor Orban being blackmailed by Vladimir Putin one way or another. Uh, I don't know, but it can, o it can be the only reason that I can think of why somebody acts so irrationally uh, like Viktor Orban. To finalize, uh, let's try to formulate a kind of suggestions uh, to Ukrainian politicians, to Ukrainian society, to Hungarian society, 
What what should we do to go out from this crisis? One clear way out would be to dethrone Viktor Orbán and uh, get rid of him by way of an election, which is which is Hungary's business. Uh, and I think that uh, looking at this man who happens to be Hungary's prime minister, he's as much our problem as he is your problem. Uh, but uh, there is not much you can do about it. Uh, it is up to Hungarian opposition politicians uh, and the Hungarian electorate uh, to get rid of this guy. Um, I think that's the only safe solution to this uh, to this problem. Thank God, uh, we do have elections uh, still. I don't know for how long, but uh, we have a an election uh, coming up a hell of a long way ahead. But you have just lost it, so it did not work. It did not work, but uh, but uh, every day brings new opportunities. Um, Viktor Orban, up until uh, recently, has not faced. Uh, problems. Uh, problems always bring about uh, new opportunities. Uh, new opportunity is Hungarian people uh, realizing that they have been uh, cheated and they have been betrayed by the government, uh, which is uh, only building its own uh, uh, power and its grip on power and not worrying about the The, the real problems of the people. Uh, it has not uh, managed in the last 12 years, it has made Hungary 100% dependent on Russian energy, uh, nuclear energy, oil and gas, while it could have diversified in many, many uh, various ways. Um, it could have uh, built an economic policy not built on corruption, uh, which would have made hung Hungary... Uh, progress in terms of people's well-being, in, in terms of people's um, uh, um, uh, purchasing power. Uh, it has not happened. Hungary is in a very deep social crisis, facing uh, uh, an economic, uh, a global economic crisis. So I am 100% convinced that change will uh, come about and uh, And there will be an alternative to Viktor Orban. The real question is um, uh, when it will happen. Uh, four years is a hell of a long way away. Uh, the only thing I can I can uh, I can propose to our Ukrainian friends is that they realize that Viktor Orban is not uh, Hungary, is not equal to Hungary. He is one Hungarian of many. Uh, who is obsessed with power and uh, manipulates Hungarians extremely effectively. But Hungarians, although uh, perhaps a bit slowly, but will wake up at the end of the day. And regardless of what Viktor Orban is saying, we have voted for every single sanction uh, in the Council, which has been proposed by the European Union. So please do make the distinction between what Viktor Orban says and what he's actually doing. Uh, he is in a difficult position to, to get European funds uh, to, uh, to operate his uh, corrupt regime. So he is in a very difficult situation and he is... Um, he knows that he has to um, to uh, to comply with uh, with EU uh, with with the European Union, and he is going to vote for sanctions at the end of the day, regardless of what he's saying. Thank you very much for that interview. Thank you for supporting Ukraine, and I very much hope that one way or another, our countries will find a way to feel themselves friends, not only neighbors.